are you ever in the class and you're like looking at this other kid and you're like i think this kid needs to, they need to join <laughs> us they need always. to join us at their kids i'm crying always always <laughs> i'm so excited to be here today <laughs> why are you excited because um i just feel like this is a very important conversation we're about to have yep and i've also slayed my fashion <laughs> sense is like evolving guys so i just want you to take note of my um fashion sense from now onwards so yes would you like my i, I got this from you the yeah that's inspiration yeah because i feel like i've done this before but you yeah. know I, li- I like that i like that yeah yeah. nice nice i'm proud of you how good. have you been Ah, uh, you know so and so good not so good but yeah very excited about today yeah about your looks to... are flourishing oh, not to be so a much. hater but like so this time yeah like you can do your styles yeah you know it's growing yes baby steps <laughs> we're almost there but yeah. yeah so to talk about why we are here today who we are here with i'm so excited I don't know if they're excited about me. I'm very excited. Yeah. They look very nervous. If you guys can't tell. Yeah, shake it. I can hear some bones <laughs> rattling and things, but you know, they'll be fine. They'll be very fine. So guys, please introduce yourourselves. This, yeah, because like if Zoo introduce you, you, introduce you, you leave. Yeah. So He's you guys going to hype to, you to like the highest. So. Yeah, so you guys have to introduce yourselves. Oh, ladies first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am Nazli Mongal. I am South African, okay. so I'm from South Africa, but I've been in Ghana for almost five years oh, wow. now i am a supervisor in aba at thera kids and a co-practice manager as well okay i am a bed nigga kwashi okay um, i'm a ghanian <laughs> pro gada so i've been with thera kids for 10 years i'm okay. also a supervisor oh. and a co-practice manager as well oh, wow. right. so what's the name of the company thera kids thera kids what's Thera-Kids. that Thera-Kids. Oh, let me fool small before we start. First oh, of all, yeah, when she said your son from South Africa, I was like, can she do the dance? <laughs> do, 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 oh, do, I can't. Do, 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 I actually oh, no, can't. Come on. <laughs> so, like, I you have can't to do, do it. You have to start things. You have to be able to do it. And then his name. Every time I hear the name Abednego, I think of like Shadrach, Meshach. Everything. Like I always think <laughs> I of mean, it. Like, like, right. Every single place I see, my name is Abednego. One we'll of the first questions are, why is Shadrach and why is Meshach? Oh, no. Come on, guys. You guys have to do better. You guys have to be better. That's yeah. But yeah, so you guys. Yeah, back to Thera Kids. Now we're about to have a serious conversation. Yeah. If I smile, ignore my smiles. <laughs> What's Thera Kids? Okay, so Thera Kids is an NGO yeah. and we focus on working with kids with developmental disorders, okay. mainly autism. Right. Yes. And that is why we're here today, guys, because it's, we are in April and April is Autism Awareness, Awareness Month. Month. And so we thought it wise to have a conversation with experts. Yes. They are new on the camera, in front of the camera, but they are experts in their field. And yeah. so we had to call them yeah. to come and talk. So shout out to Lady Diana, by the way, who I was speaking to about autism. We just had like a random conversation and she mentioned you guys. I was like, oh, we definitely have to talk to you guys. So yeah. here you are. Yeah. So let's get into it. What's that? Autism. What's that? I've been hearing it. Yeah. You know, even people media. even use it like in a sort of an insult sometimes like if someone is being slow they be like you are being autistic for yeah, example like that's yeah. very autistic of you mm-hmm. so i'm actually very curious to have this conversation and know what autism actually is mm-hmm. and yeah why it happens yeah. well autism is a neurodevelopmental condition or disorder and it f- has a range of differences specifically in language and communication, socialization, and then sensory processing, mm-hmm. routines, and repetitive behaviors. Mm. So um, what causes autism? Does it just happen or it's like, um, what do you call what do Genetic. You call it? You can't Genetic <laughs> or is it based on like maybe something the mother or father does like during pregnancy or There before? is no known cause mm. for what causes autism. Mm. There isn't um, any research as yet that proves that it's anything that happened in pregnancy or it's an environmental factor or it's genetics. Right. So we can't pinpoint something specific that causes autism. Interesting. But there are predispositions Mm. genetically and environmental. Okay. Mm. So in some families, you can have one 
child who is autistic. But in some families, first child is autistic, second child is autistic. Yeah. So sometimes there is that genetic factor. Mm. But it's not something we can boldly say is yeah. always there. Yeah. So we can't judge. There are some families when they have one kid with autism, they wouldn't want to have any other kids again because yeah. they're afraid. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some, they are bold to try. And the second child might turn out without it. Mm-hmm. So yeah so yeah. i'm someone who uses you know tiktok quite a bit and there's like autism tiktok if that makes sense so basically a space on tiktok where people with living with autism post um about their experiences kind of trying to explain how life goes for them and then for people who maybe are not able to use tiktok you see their families posting for them their mothers siblings mm-hmm. and so on so i've been there quite a bit and so from what i've learned i know autism they always speak about the spectrum yeah so what's that what's the spectrum okay the reason they say a spectrum is no two people with autism are the same yeah. right yes and there's a quote by dr stephen shaw it says that if you meet one person with autism you have met one person with autism mm. um it's a whole variety of differences mm. even when you have the deficits when you have the excesses they still differ mm. so they try to put it all in the spectrum and then say you are in a spectrum but you are not before you are not after mm. you are there with us mm. so it's something like that yeah. okay so how would you know if someone is on the spectrum okay so um you need to be diagnosed by a specialist mm. a neurologist um, a child psychologist and other professionals mm. yes so normally based on the um, is it cdc mm. no 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 a P, American Psychologist oh, Association. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I know APM. Yeah. Yes, APM. So we are sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. APM. Um, they have criteria for diagnosis. Mm. So you will be diagnosed based on social interaction, language, and communication, and then stereotypical or repetitive patterns mm-hmm. of behavior. And you need to have a certain score before you can be said to fall or mm-hmm. be with it autism that's all okay 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 so i just want to um track back a bit and ask the two of you personal questions why do you find yourself in the field where you are working with autistic people or supporting um autism related families for example if that makes sense okay personally (laughs) i entered the field should i say a little by accident okay yes when i finished school a friend of mine she just she did my CV for me and everything. Sent it to the company. They were hiring. I have to do that to And Zoom. then <laughs> she just calls me and says, oh, by the way, we have an interview next week. Wow. It's about this. <laughs> so let's go mm. and then Wait, do it. What did you, what did you do in, in, in um, I did psychology. Oh, okay, right. okay. Makes sense. Yes. So she said she didn't want me to sit home and yeah, rest yeah. and play. So we both went for the interview. We both passed. Oh, that's so nice. And we both got in. But she had to drop out. Oh, okay. Yes, because of school. And once I joined, I did my service with them. After service, I stayed on because I loved kids. Yeah. And seeing them make little steps of progress was always amazing for us. Mm. Things people take for granted all the time. When our kids do it, it's amazing. It's news. And... I found that very exhilarating. Yeah. So I just couldn't come to leave. Yeah. Yeah. So I just learned more and then I stayed more. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, that's Thank cool. You. I hear the joy in your voice. That's, yeah, really, same. that's same. really nice. <laughs> Can you give us like an example of something that is casual, but when it happens, you're like, wow, this is amazing for some of the kids. Eye contact. You yeah. call a child and they look at you. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's amazing. When that happens, do you have to act normal or do you like, oh my God. Oh, oh we God. do oh my god <laughs> you have to let them know that uh, this yes. is a good act. Oh, okay nice, that's nice, nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. i i still remember the early days there was a boy who was like seven mm. and when he came on we had mentioned to the parents that at his age we don't think he would actually talk or anything mm. so we should think about using a device and all but after three months one day we were having therapy and then the therapist said ah and then he said ah <laughs> the therapist scream <laughs> and then other people came from their stations yeah. and they all come yeah. say uh, the child will say uh, and they will all scream and they will run around and come back <laughs> we're all jubilating it yeah. was so amazing yeah oh, i love that i love that <laughs> now over to you yes over to you <laughs> my journeys 
quite intense, I'd okay. say. Um, well, I started in South Africa. Um, I used to do the Sunday school, and the pastors always told me that I had a knack mm. for children. Right. Okay, and then I started studying, and as a student, I really wanted to make my own money. So I would apply for jobs, like in retail stores, and I wouldn't get it. And I was so disappointed, like, why is all my friends getting work and not me? Mm. And then I saw a job position in the newspaper for junior therapist, okay. right? And I was like, okay, it's in line with my studies. Let me just try. And I did, and I happened to be really good at it, and that's probably why I've come this far. Mm. So I would say that it's a God in divine mm. intervention for yeah. me. Okay. Mm. And then how did you transition from South Africa to Ghana? <laughs> I'm asking like it's I'm a, a journalist. Long story because there are kids used to be connected to the company that I was working for in mm -hmm. South Africa, and one of the supervisors that I was working with in South Africa happened to be a supervisor for Terra Kids. Okay. Um. So he saw my potential and he thought that I was really needed and I'd be valued at Terra Kids. And it took a lot of convincing mm. for me to move <laughs> to Ghana. But then, yeah, I am. Five years later, so I guess. Exactly. It was right. <laughs> yes, he was right. That's yeah. good. Okay. So. Moving into your experience in Ghana, obviously you started in Ghana, you moved here after a bit. So I think I'll start with you. Your experience working with kids in this space in South Africa compared to Ghana, mm -hmm. what would you say the societal, um, what's the word? Differences. Differences. The differences, yeah. Or even the way people behave towards mm -hmm. people with autism. I don't know, think it's that different. It's not that different, mm -hmm. is yes. it? Yeah. In South Africa, I'd say maybe we have a little bit more resources and just maybe a little bit more awareness around autism and maybe we started a bit earlier than they did in Ghana, but I do feel like the differences aren't that great. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um people who have kids with autism is just the same as here. Um, if you can afford the services and you know about the resources that are available out there then you would bring your child to receive that treatment mm. but if not you wouldn't yeah. mm. and it's just as it is here as it is there mm. Mm. okay mm. okay and for you like entering the space so uh, when you enter the space i also do psychology and you go to ug okay so yeah, I did. So this time i'm proud of you because yeah i know he <laughs> actually did it he's yeah, not and, like he and we didn't did it. we didn't like necessarily really go deep in, deep into it so I, I i knew next to nothing about it by the time i was done so for you moving into that space was it like a kind of a shock for you did you have to learn a lot well the most i had to learn was um the terminologies and stuff okay but when i was in school i was a very good student thank you very much thank you very much so uh, i really <laughs> loved um the theory of learning basically okay. that's what we use the yeah, theory yeah. of learning we use um classical conditioning open conditioning yes so when i came and we started the training it was all very familiar mm. yes but i had never met actual kids um, with autism mm. that yeah. we're doing interventions for. Was so. that the first time you were like putting those like classical conditioning things in in practice, proper practice? Mm, not really. Not really. Okay. Not really. Okay. okay. If you really were in school, taking it seriously, yes. interacting with your team. One reason I love psychology was a lot of the things were very very practical. Classical yeah. classical conditioning. It was all around us. Open conditioning. Mm -hmm. It was all around us. Who was that? Learning. Please, open. we are listening to the, <laughs> to the experts. Let's listen to the experts. What is this? <laughs> yeah. Please go ahead. I, I was always going to say, um, talk about the open conditioning. Yes, but that's... Please go ahead. Please let us know. I okay. want to know what Learning is. by consequences. Okay. Exactly. So when something is followed by positive consequence, <laughs> mm. the chances are that behavior will keep occurring. Yeah, yeah. And if it's followed by negative consequence, then it will stop um it's like yeah, reinforcements yeah. and yeah. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yes he's got it yeah he's got it, he's got it. i remember you know one or two one or two you know <laughs> one or two yeah okay interesting and um, i think we, we should go back to like the whole um explanation of um, autism what are some of the signs that a person can have that will make us know that okay this person probably has autism and then should 
have the assessments done. Yeah. I feel okay. like it's a difficult question because, like, we know the spectrum is very, it's very yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, but if you yeah. can answer, but I'm sure there are some things that you see somewhere like this This person should probably go for a test, yeah. right? There's yes. a few things here yeah. from 18 months, you, you start seeing signs. Mm. Yeah. A diagnosis can be made like two years onwards, but from 18 months, you should start seeing signs if your child is not given eye contact, if your child is not making any sounds at all, or not playing probably appropriately with toys and stuff and mm-hmm. um, being fixated on particular things or toys mm. and sometimes they have a lot of dietary issues as well mm. so you see that their feeding is a problem sleeping is a problem mm. all of these are just small markers you can look out for mm. and then you can try and get your child assessed mm. okay. in ghana of course oh don't worry about it. No, you're yeah. fine. Yo, your gr- your grandmother they started sell. speaking at fourteen. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> your uncle didn't talk till everybody was eight. Uh huh. So they say things like that, and then people are okay with it. Mm. But that's a good thing nowadays. Now people are looking for signs, yeah. and they're like, "Oh, my child is two. He's, he's not me. really doing this. Should I be worried? Yeah. My child is one and a half, and it's a really good thing yeah. nowadays. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's one of those yeah. things that the earlier you notice it, yeah. is it? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So for you, um, both in South Africa and Ghana, when you started or when you entered this field, the reaction or the attention towards um, mm. autism from the general public mm-hmm. compared to now, do you feel like there's been a huge change? Absolutely. And do, you, do you have any reasons or any ideas why that's... I think awareness has just grown mm-hmm. and acceptance as well. Yeah. I think there are more workshops, more research being done mm-hmm. about autism in South Africa and in Ghana. So I do feel like there has been mm-hmm. quite a significant improvement in awareness mm-hmm. and acceptance. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And so I feel like I, I would have probably saved this for later in the conversation, but I just want to ask now. So moving forward, do you feel like there's hope or even more hope? Because I know there's still, like, obviously we're in mm-hmm. Africa, and, you know, a lot of people don't either don't believe in it or they'll feel like, you know, it's kind of spiritual or you yeah. know how it is. Do you feel like as younger people, especially oh. are now entering parenthood, we are more educated, we are more open to things around the world. Do you feel like the attitude is going to change even more and then we can make some progress in the field? I believe so. Yeah. I believe so too. Yeah. But there, there's still there's a, a lot of work. I've met a few university students who don't know what autism is. Yeah. Yeah. But 10 years ago, a lot more people didn't, didn't know what autism sure. is. Yeah. Sure. So yeah. now there are more, but still there's so much work to be done. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And um, something I've heard about people who are autistic is that sometimes they are, not sometimes, most of the time, they are usually very good in one particular thing or a particular thing, maybe very good in math or very good in music or Or very good in something. Is this true in all cases or in most cases? Or this is just like a myth? It's a myth. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, wow. Okay. It's a myth. Um, Was it second? Last week, for instance. Yes. Yes. It was one of the things you mentioned. Yeah. We do have. And... When people who watch The Good Doctor yes, would use that, when they see this, like, or Sheldon, yes. and then they say, like, oh, mm-hmm. they're all super mm-hmm. smart, amazing. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. It's not true. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> um, we do have servants, but they are very rare. Okay. Yeah. They are just as normal as all of us. Okay. A lot of them I have met, do start to read very early. Okay. But that can be attributed to a lot of things, okay. especially because nowadays a lot of them have devices, yeah. watching yes. videos, um, flashcards, and these things now they are very, very common. Mm. So they are able to pick up and then start reading very early. A mm. lot of them I have met. Okay. Yes. So being but, so being good at music or arts or math or whatever it is is not one of the signs you look out for. No. no. Okay. No. Okay. It just it's just something that may or may not happen. It There's no correlation. Exactly. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Me too. Yeah. My my mind is blown now because like, <laughs> I literally thought that that was like one of the things. Yeah. Like people yeah. were like, oh yeah, with Aristotle's geniuses, yeah. Yeah. all of like, them. Oh yeah, like, he's autistic, but yeah. he's very good in math, or he's very yeah. good at the piano. Mm. He doesn't speak much, but he can play the piano, stuff like that. Mm. As with every other person, Mm -hmm. you might have a knack for something in particular. Right. But it's not a given that they are 
like going to be good at something. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you say that the general thing is that um, basically their development is just much slower than the average person. Is that what autism is? No. Okay. Yes. And um, when we say something is a disorder, mm-hmm. that, mean, it, that means it just doesn't follow the way we consider normal. Okay. Mm. That's all. Okay. They see, they hear, they feel everything we feel, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it's neurodevelopmental. So okay. the brain transmits it into different ways than how ours would. Okay. And that's basically the difference. Yeah. So they might have issues explaining or deciphering things from the way we do okay but they also feel it okay. and once they are able to learn how to fully express themselves you can find that everything you know they might know and even well. better okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and understand them too interesting yeah. okay okay so working with um you guys mainly work with kids so i mean it's called there are kids right yeah. okay so working with kids um throughout the years do you ever have cases where people sort of in quotes graduate from the program and then you guys, they go back yeah, home. Yeah, bye-bye, see you, take care. <laughs> have do you ever life, have that type yeah, of thing? Or is it like a long-term commitment type of thing? Mm-hmm. Let me let me see how. We do have a, a success story, like the one who started Therakets. Right. Yes, mm-hmm. her boss. Her son is now in typical school by himself. Okay. Most of the time, without any um, supervision okay. in school. Okay. When he started, he wasn't like that. Okay. Um, he was non-verbal. He was breaking TVs. Wow. Now he can have a conversation with you. And he can make very, very amazing things with him. You're like, is that him? It's so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So we we do have um, stories like that. They are not a lot. Okay. Mm. But sometimes it's following through also that is an issue. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of parents are, for lack of a better word, in like a hurry to see a lot of progress in yeah. a short time yeah and not all of them also start early the one i'm talking about started early i'm um, around two where she had started and for like eight years he was still doing it mm. but some come like one year um it's not going as fast as they wanted yeah. to go yeah. yes so they're going to try something else yeah and someone will and then they'll come back and then they'll go so sometimes all of those mm. attribute factors to it. Yeah. yeah. So what's as, always progress. So what are some of the crazy been. things people have, have been doing out there that you, you just want to tell them that you please this just is come just to come to their kids, please. We beg you. Yeah. What are some of the things that maybe parents or families might think is the right thing to do, but it's not necessarily the right thing to do to help? Maybe for example, they'll take the child to like a prayer camp mm. because this is a spirit and it must go out. We know that that is god god heals god helps god evolves but that's not the only direction so those are some of the other things that people do that you hear the story and it's just like wow do they really think that's gonna help uh the other thing is uh, morbid so i would even mention that you yeah. know that some consider them as in silver or something mm-hmm. and then they would have to take return. them back to there yes okay at least that has decreased mm. significantly but wow. i heard a story some a while back a parent had gone to save another child because they were going to like do that to the child. Yeah. And she had taken the child in In this Ghana. In, in this, this in this Ghana. early two thousands. Yes. Mm. Guys, this is not a nineteen ninety story. This hap- this happened yeah. and maybe even still happening in places. Yeah. And yeah. that's scary. That is scary. Yeah. How about in uh, South Africa? Is there like people doing weird things of that sort where not that I know of. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no haven't heard yeah. of such stories yeah i'm not surprised actually yeah because it's the same thing with um the thing that you sent the twins that are joined the conjoined yeah the twins. Yeah, yeah, yeah people yeah. if people have children who have that issue like they are capable of yeah. leaving them in a forest oh, or something yeah. because they believe that they yeah, are for the gods yeah, and stuff like that yeah, yeah. i think yeah generally uh, what i've seen is when people are just different a lot if you fa- if the families don't have the education to know that you know it's not that what's happening is not that crazy you tend to like i know the stories of people like locking up their mm-hmm. children in their home for years people don't even know there's a child there yeah and then they find them like 15 years later and obviously if let's say they had autism at that point you know the all the help that they could have Got had 
to ashamed. that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it's definitely a thing. Um, people are also very ashamed. That's the so point. I think is that something you guys work on? Do you also work with families because yeah. the shame? I feel like the shame is. A yeah, very people big feel thing in yeah, our culture. especially rich homes like a hey, they don't want anybody to know that they, their child has autism yeah. or social people status. Very, like very people really care about how they are perceived. Yes, by the public. Yeah. yeah. So the stigma, there is really nothing we can do about yeah. the stigma. Yeah. But when parents come to us, we do talk with them, right? And we let them know, or we put the cast on the table. It's like this, but there's been progress. Mm. There will be progress. Mm. If we are consistent with what we want to do, there will definitely be progress. Mm. So you don't have to be shy. You don't have to be afraid. I know a lot of parents, kids we work with, they can't go out with them in public. Yes. Mm. Yes. yes. They can't go out with them in, because they are scared. Yes. Mm. He's Becoming going to put on right some now. small yeah. shoe and Becoming then display, yeah. they, they will be so embarrassed. Yeah. And Ghanaians are not very sensitive. Yes, Ghanaians will all be looking at you like, yes. hey, or bow, yeah, they do. What they in those things? Maybe like, oh, yeah, they do is, is a nice thing. Oh, yeah, they do. I say, oh, Obana, um, or, or your papa. <laughs> <laughs> And oh, they'll yeah, actually, they can Daniels say these so things to your face. Yes, they'll they say to your face. That's so oh, like, is he okay? Is he sick? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm laughing. And then, and then they start to give Daniels you like, so unhinged, like it's, it's wild. They start to give you like what they think so you should do. I have to do. call out somebody yeah. like in my yeah, office. Please call so someone sorry. Like, there was a time where like my dad was seriously unwell and I lost like so much, so much weight. And when I came to the office, he said, hey, why are you so skinny now? Are you on a slimming course? <laughs> and I, would, I hadn't been in the office for like a week, like a whole week. Like I hadn't been around. So if somebody hasn't been around for a whole weekend, they come back and they've lost to it. Like, is that the approach? Like at least read the room or ask. Yeah. She's like, hey, you've lost to it. Why? You're already slim. So what slimming course is this? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I feel like sometimes Ghanaians don't know how to read the room. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. we are just sometimes not as emotionally intelligent no. as we should be. Mm, <laughs> that's true. Many times, yeah, yes. Many yes. times. Okay. So we are hopeful that as things are progressing, um, people will start bringing their children from the locked rooms. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes, too, um, one reason is there is not a lot of places you can take your kids. Yeah. 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 A lot of these places, they are quite um, capital intensive. Yeah. Yeah. And I was, I was gonna, I was gonna ask that. Yeah. For you guys, it, it's I know it's an NGO, so I guess the idea is. Is either free or very or cheap subsidized. or subsidized. Well, we haven't reached there yet. Yeah. Currently, that's the idea. Like the plan. That's yeah. the plan. Yeah. So right now, we are actually trying to work on funding. Yeah. Right. Because we need to one alleviate the pressure on parents. Yeah. And also, we need to make it easily accessible to people who cannot afford it. Yeah. So we, even though we have parents now who, um, it's been subsidized for them, we should be able to reach even more. Yeah. Because mm. there are more people who have need of these services. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, I also want to ask. Um, obviously, we all have a role as the society and everything, but authorities, I feel like, have a huge role to play. Um, I remember a couple years ago. I think it was like shortly after the pandemic. Um, I was reading like, and there was a there was a sports story, like a football story. I think a few teams in England, like Arsenal, West Ham, had. I forget what they called them, but they had these rooms that were safe because it's a stadium, right? And this football is loud. Not a lot of autistic kids can handle those things. So they had special rooms for autistic kids to come and experience the football. But like they had maybe earmuffs, they had soft toys, they had they made it a place where they could More drive and yeah. still, you know, enjoy the whole spectacle. So clearly in that part of the world, they're taking it very seriously and they're making changes to accommodate them. Um as a Ghanaian, even roads are hard to, good roads are hard to even find a lot of the time. So <laughs> that everybody uses them. Yeah. <laughs> that's everybody, that everybody, everybody uses. uses. So Imagine. I know I haven't checked anything, but I can take a very good bet that you guys don't get a lot of support from the government. We had a conference, was it last year? Mm-hmm. And we found out there is a policy. The constitution. <laughs> Did you know there's a policy? Let me tell you, there's a policy for, for everything. 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 <laughs> everything. But it's just not being it's, yeah. followed through. Yeah. Because schools are supposed to make room for mm. kids with learning yeah. disorders. Yeah. But right now, our uh, government schools, how many students in a class? There's to one teacher. Yes. And with our kids, you need 
like with therapy we do one-on-one intervention yeah. 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 because as you mentioned no two are the same so if you are teaching the same concept to two people in you might not in get it ways. in the same way yeah. so you need to take it one at a time but in our schools 35 students in the class yeah. one teacher yeah if you are not getting the a and the b they'll move on to those who are getting the Actually, c and, very true. Yeah. and then they'll move on and then go on yeah. and leave behind yeah. that's what happens yeah. very true so does that mean that for example some of the kids that i was in school with who some of them were not necessarily as moving as quickly and there are some people i don't know if you had it in your school there are some Yo, people that they'll repeat them like I yes think about it five times all the like time everybody blush at it. yes i think about it all yes. the that could just mean that yes. it was possible that they were just yes. autistic and we didn't know yeah and after that's, i started that's working. very heartbreaking mm-hmm. 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 yeah I after i started the working time. the same yeah. thing yeah because I, I feel like everybody knows somebody who was in their school that they were just not getting it mm-hmm. is there like the i mean autism presents itself in different ways but is there like do you ever have kids where they're just they just will not learn. They're rowdy. They, you know, like psh, psh, psh. I don't know how to say that in English. Like psh, psh. you know, some kids are psh, psh. like what explosive. Like they are just like they on a round down. Yeah, hyperactive. That, that hyperactive. A- yeah, that's, ADHD. Like, that's more ADHD, yeah. right? Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Yeah. So but, that's also another thing that needs to be worked on. By yeah, ADHD. Right? We talk about that as well yeah, on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, every kid is capable of learning. Yeah. That's mm. one of the first things you always tell every parent. Every child is capable of learning. What you need to do is find out how best a child learns. Yeah. And then you can put measures in place to help them. Okay. Yeah. And then um, practically speaking, um, obviously the kids come to TheraKids. They have the whole interaction with you. And then they go back home and they are with their families. So what are some of the things that family members have to do for autistic children for them to be more comfortable you <laughs> been quiet, yes. Yes. quiet. quiet. Yes. <laughs> well at the kids we do parent training okay. and caregiver training as well we do believe that consistency is key okay. so it's very important that therapists and family members and if the child is at school teachers are all doing the same thing Mm. because they learn best when we are consistent okay so what are some of the things for example i know every every child is unique so it's kind of difficult but what are some of the things that you would advise a parent who has an autistic child to do and siblings as well enforce what we're doing so for example if we're teaching requesting for a child to learn how to ask for things Mm -hmm. make them ask and if it's on the device or they're using a picture exchange communication system or if it's vocally let them request before you give them as opposed to you just giving it to them because maybe they're crying or mm. they're being a little bit impatient mm. Mm. yes so just okay. like stick to what we're doing okay you said something picture picture exchange communication system. okay so can you give me some of the um, communication tools you use and how they work we have picture exchange communication okay and then we oh. have ACC, yes, yes, mm-hmm. and that nice. is argumentative alternative communication. Okay, yes, and that's just like the picture exchange communication system on a device. Okay, so how does the picture one work? Is it like pictures of things, and if I need something, I point at it. So it's pictures of everything that the child would use on a daily basis. Okay, in a folder, and we categorize the folder. So maybe if it's food, drinks, mm-hmm. um, toilet, anything that they would need. You take a picture of that, you paste it on the folder, and okay. they would pick it up and give it to you. And okay. then you would vocalize for them what they're trying to communicate. Right. So if they pasted a picture of a juice <coughs> on the folder, then you would be that vocal. Okay. For them okay. So juice. you want juice. Okay. Yes, and then give it to them. Okay. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then the other device that you mentioned. Yeah. So it's just like that. Mm-hmm. Only the device is now the communication and not you. Okay. So they would go into their folder if it's for food, and they will select chips. Mm-hmm. Click on the icon, and the device will vocalize. Uh, it will say chips. chips. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And then you know what they're asking okay. for. All right. So do you like record? Can you re- record stuff on the um, device to tell it? Do you yes. get what I mean? Okay. okay. Interesting. Because like if, if the child wants, let's say like Hausa Koko, I, I know there's like very, like it, very specific. You yeah, 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 you want Hausa Koko. Yeah. Yeah. So we need it to like tell it to every family and then the kind, exactly. of, the kind right. of stuff that they do. That's very interesting. Okay. That's cool. Are you guys nervous now? Like this is not yes, that bad. Yes, very scary. Girl, why? I okay can you tell us some of the stories like like how you said there was one child mm. who couldn't speak and could speak what are some of the other examples you have 
of things that happen at Therakis, just so more people have perspective of what um, autism looks like or translates like in people. And what you guys do as well as Therakis, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, like some of the no, interesting stories, some of the sad ones. A success some of the story ones. for me yeah. would be, well, when I moved to Ghana, I moved here for one particular child, mm-hmm. right? And when I started with her, she was at school maybe once or twice for two hours a day. And right now we are at school every single day for mm. a full day. Okay. So for me, wow. that's a success. Yes. Yeah, 100%. So yeah. what was, the, what yeah. was the, the reason for the two hour, one hour? Was it like she gets overwhelmed and just wants to go back? We want oh. to take it mm-hmm. at our pace. Okay. Right. So if we notice that maybe eight to ten is better for her in the morning, maybe she's more focused at that mm. time. The pressure at school isn't as intense as it is after ten. Then that is what was working mm. for her. Mm. Mm. And then we build her up by the hours and by the days up until the point where we are now, where yeah. we can go to school every day. That's so cool. And do you do you ever have? cases or scenarios where it's like you feel like you're starting to make some progress then, but then the family has been impatient and then they just take the child away and you feel like ah oh, like guys not not right now do yeah. you ever have that i feel like i was just talking to you about one yes. of the kids yeah. that is at one of the schools i work at um the kid used to be, work with abed and abed was telling me that he had just started speaking and they had taken him out oh, of their Oh, my kids. God. <laughs> and now he's not speaking anymore. Oh, no. He's not speaking anymore. Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, so I think something that families need to learn is patience, I guess. Exactly. I think a lot of people don't have patience, especially when you have... I think, you know, a lot of people, when they have kids, they have all these dreams yeah. mm-hmm. and ideas that their kid is going to be this and that. And yeah. when it's not going in that path, it's like... Come on, what's happening? And I think aside patients from something that they've mentioned that has spoken to me is this is the child's normal. So you need to adjust and realize that, okay, yeah. if they are able to yeah. speak, that's amazing. But yeah. if not, like you should be able to readjust Find your life exactly. and exactly. understand that like, okay, this is who the person is. <clears throat> and I think that's where the problem is for most families. Like mm. they don't realize that, okay, they might go to their kids and then they might just learn a few words in five years and that's okay for them they feel like okay within the next two or three years the child should be in their opinion normal yeah like an average person what they think is normal but that yeah. might not always be the case yeah yeah, yeah. and that's something very that true we need to very true yeah yeah what about you do you have any personal success stories well my personal uh, success is the very beginning one the one like you said shared. yeah, yeah. And I remember closely when we started school facilitation with him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he didn't have any social skills mm-hmm. previously. So we had to teach him greetings. Yeah. When you meet somebody, you greet. And at a point, everyone in the school knew him. Because, because when he, he got everybody. to school, he would stop and greet every everyone. single person uh, by name. <laughs> he would say hi. And yes, he got so good with it. Now he was everyone's favorite. Yeah. Oh, so everyone knew. And it was amazing for us. Yeah. Because previously he wouldn't even look at you. Yeah. Mm. So that's like my biggest one. Okay. So with school facilitation, um, how I understand it is that you take the kids with autism to school, like you go to school with them, right? And you go through the school day with them. Mm-hmm. So when you go to class and you go to school, are you ever in the class and you're like looking at this other kid and like, I think this kid needs to, they need to join <laughs> us. They need Always. to join us at their games. I'm crying. Always. Always. Yes. And even some teachers will come to you and they will tell you, look at this other one. Yeah. Can you help? <laughs> you think he's wow. also there? Yeah. He's like that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> we have spoken to the parents, but they are not minding that. No, that's yeah. Yeah. So can you talk to the parents who are saying, no, we don't do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you, uh, you're just going to like normal, you just go to normal schools with the, the kids. It's not any special school necessarily. No, mainstream schools. Okay. There are some schools that accept special needs kids. Okay. So okay. not all, okay. but some. So normally we act like a shadow in okay. the classroom just to make sure the child follows whatever is being done in mm, the class. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. So it's almost like a nanny that's in the class. It's not like you're actively doing everything with no, them. You're just the like aim, that, not the yes. nanny. Okay. <laughs> no, Why? shadow. Yes. Shadow. <laughs> okay, what's the difference? Uh, um, a nanny it would just be there to make sure the child is feeling really okay. Yes. And, yes. We are trying to make sure the child is involved in every single right. thing that is being done. Right. And one of the jobs actually is to extend 
um, instructional control to the teacher okay. because a lot of times the kids are very good with us but they are not good with other people mm-hmm. so one key thing is to hand over that control to the teacher so mm-hmm. that the teacher would also be able to give instructions mm-hmm. and the child will follow it just as they would follow us okay and then gradually we will fade ourselves yeah. out okay so the child is in there by themselves okay mm-hmm. nani's idea is that i have to keep my job so yes, i have to, to make sure the child is it's okay yeah, 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 yeah. and learning but mm-hmm. us we have to work ourselves out, out of, of a job. job. Mm. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's helpful. Mm. And what's the age range now for therapy? It's like what is the age range you usually have or is it all the way up to 18 for example? Well, currently we have um 15 year olds. Okay. We have I think that's our oldest. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes, we have 15 year olds. How many kids We've are had an 18 year old. That was years ago. Okay. Uh-huh. How I'm many kids? How many kids are in the program like all together? Currently, we have about 38. Oh, wow. That's cool. And there's obviously other facilitators mm-hmm. besides yes. you guys. Okay. Yes. So it's not just the two of you. No! no. <laughs> <laughs> you want us to die. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, because yeah. it sounds like it's very involving. So you can't really have that many people. Um, You can't really work with that many people. 30 yeah. students. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. And then going back to you guys, um, I just want to ask personally, are there times where me my my sometimes i go to the office toilet and cry i'm sorry because also the work is over me so are there times where like emotionally like it affects you like you see something and like, what has, have you guys had like experiences like that actually where, like, you would have a lot of these yeah. experiences yeah. in yeah. this kind of job yeah and people burn out a, yeah a lot mm-hmm. so you just need to have a system in place and mm-hmm. um, some of us we talk amongst ourselves yeah we share frustrations <clears throat> other colleagues she'll just go cry yeah. she'll just put water in her mouth she will talk and then she'll just be there for a while just so that she doesn't say anything inappropriate mm-hmm. yeah. yes i have a colleague right. like that but it's good to have your own systems yeah. of letting out the stress if you need to take um a week off just so that you distress and come back refreshed because we always want you to give your very best yeah. all the time yeah. you have to yeah. Yeah. how about you kids. have you cried before yeah all the time yeah. till this day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i do um but yes like a bit said you have to have a system even though it does become overwhelming i mean you swallow it in the session and you keep it moving yeah so what are some of the reasons why like, i'm sorry i feel like i'm pricking like what are some of the reasons no, like ask, I was the ask slow you. progression of families like what are some of the reasons that you cry for me it was just a few weeks ago that i was in a clinic and i was crying and it was like why is she not getting it yes you know it's yeah. like i'm trying and i've done all that i can to move things around to alter to modify it but she's just not getting it yeah and it was difficult for me to yeah. process and you know you just take it and then you continue to look for alternatives to teach whatever it is that you're teaching mm. and you keep trying mm. how about you um basically around that i i have spent a lot of nights um thinking about a child's progress because a particular lesson is not moving yeah. and i'm like what if we do it this way what if we do it this way we've already we've already tried this way it's not working we've already tried this way it's not working and then you call this person have you guys tried this as well can we try this and everything you're trying is still not working yeah. and you're exhausted yes yeah like what else can we do mm-hmm. yeah it's you I become really emotionally attached yeah, to the yeah. progress yeah. and when it's not working it's tough yes it's I really so. tough for us mm. so mm. do you guys ever because so i remember when i was finishing with um psychology one of the obvious career paths was to go into like clinical psychology and all this thing and i had a friend who was a couple years older and who was working in that field and she told me that i shouldn't do it but she was working with like victims of like assault and those types of things and she said she cries every night she had to go for as find a psychologist for herself yeah therapy and uh, therapy for herself and that was one of the things that put me off so do you guys ever you know it didn't let me rephrase it it's not a therapy that put me off no it's okay it's, it's okay no, no no but that's i just need to make it clear it's not yeah. therapy that put me off it like was this. just having to go to work every day and hearing like different people's sto- um, traumatic stories right exactly so do you guys ever consider therapy for yourselves as therapists mm. you know in order to like handle some of these things i haven't mm. i haven't even though i have been told that i should mm. but i just i haven't i mm. feel like even though i cry or 
I feel so emotionally overwhelmed, I find a way to go. Right. So I don't feel like I need to see a therapist. Yeah. To offload. Mm. Mm. I also feel I haven't got to that point yet. Okay. When I'll need that. Mm, yeah. Mm, 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 okay. Interesting. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So yeah, I guess back to the future question. Back to the back to the future question. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um so like you said, there's not that many facilities like there kids in Ghana and even across Africa for kids with autism to mm. develop and in the way that they should. What do you guys think is this the way forward? Like or do you guys have any personal plans? Like, do you want to open your own place? Do you want to start your own NGOs? I know you guys have some dreams. Tell us. Maybe someone's listening and they can help, you know? <laughs> yeah. Our follow SDA, they are very... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not laughing at you guys. Yeah, please. They, they <laughs> One of the things we have in our pipeline is to be able to do trainings for mm. people. Mm. So not necessarily the people who are even coming to work with us, mm. but maybe training for schools mm. so that they can better understand and better manage kids. Because there are a lot of schools that have kids like these, mm-hmm. but they have no kind of training. They have no idea why the kids are the way they are. So it would help if we can go out, kind of like an outreach. Mm. So we won't wait for them to come to us. Yes. So that we'll be able to go out, find places, organize workshops, and then... We can help in Mm. that way as well. Mm. 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 And what about you? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. I feel like um, the workshops that have been happening, you know, GP Bank does a workshop on autism in April, Mm -hmm. um, and there are some private ones as well. Maybe if there are kids could also offer workshops Mm. um, to reach more people and if those workshops didn't only run in April, I always say we shouldn't limit autism awareness and acceptance mm. to April. Yeah. But maybe it can run throughout the year. Right. Yeah, that's just what I feel. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I like that. So, yeah, personally, I've learned so much. Yes. I'm really glad we spoke to you guys. Yeah. Um, I hope everyone who's listening has learned a lot as well. And <clears throat> I guess the, I feel like one of the, biggest steps we can take as a society just like educate ourselves you know um and then just awareness i feel like awareness is the the key thing that we need to grow as a society and um accept people living with autism a lot more so yeah i'm really glad you guys came i I really respect the work that you do exactly it's not easy i know it's not easy i can imagine but i'm glad you guys do what you do yeah you guys are heroes yeah yeah actually yeah, yeah, I do see myself as a superhero. Uh, yeah, as you should, as you should. Heroes, honestly, <laughs> because it takes a lot of patience. Yes. Yes. Like, even what people assume are normal kids would test your patience. Exactly. So, dealing with someone who has special needs and then the progress and all these different things you have to, I think you guys are doing amazing. Yeah. And God Anyone bless who knows you. Marvel, yes, let them know they're wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, Marvel. <laughs> Oh, DC. Oh, DC. Yeah, DC. DC. Yeah, DC is better. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, one thing we like to do before we leave is um ask you guys, is there anyone you'd like to hear or see on Stay By Plan? Yeah. Any from any field? Anything? Who do you think and we should we'll talk see what to? We can do. <laughs> I don't know. Can't be yeah. anyone at all. That's an interesting question, a tough yes. one. I don't know. Okay. You don't have to answer it. Like, you can think about it and text us later. Okay. Yeah. yeah and um, <laughs> yeah, is there a song you guys have been feeling that you would like people to check out? Like, oh, what yeah. song have you been listening to? Yeah, because we like music on stage. Yeah, my own is it? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> do, 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 do. I have to learn it. Tyler's new album. Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah have, we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and me and Zoo were able to yeah, listen tell them, to. Tell yeah, them. guys. So, we got invited to Tyler's pre listening party for oh. art. So, we got yeah. to see Tyler in the in the flesh online. Because, like, was it was, it was Metro. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that was nice. That was yeah, cool, we yeah. listened to the art song. They showed us the dance challenge and everything. I think two days before she brought it out. Yeah, yeah. so that was really cool. Yeah. yeah, that was cool. But so yeah, Tyler's album, right? What about you? What music are you listening to? <laughs> oh, Tiana, Afrobeats, gospel. This gospel, don't be shy. Yeah. Don't let Zoo tell you. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I, I don't listen to music. Um, new songs a lot. I'm one Which of those fine. people who. 
like it's fixated with the ones I have. Give us an but, old um, song. <laughs> oh, currently I heard a song by is Iniko mm-hmm. and Amor. I don't know who. You, what kind of what genre wow, is that? Wow, so that you don't know. So it's like a mu- music encyclopedia. <laughs> oh. Is it? What was it? What genre is it again? I have no idea. You have no idea, but you like it. Yes, we we'll have to listen. I, to I really I'll like her lyrics. Okay. okay, and she has a lot of other songs. Mm. Yeah, there's right. a night, Jericho. Yeah. Okay, we'll check it out. All right. So yeah, I guess that's it. Thank you guys so much. They said we shouldn't stop. Everybody we shouldn't stop. Oh, guys, <laughs> <laughs> everybody in the studio said we shouldn't stop. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know, to okay. be fair, we have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to, <laughs> fun fact, Zoo wrote some difficult questions for them. That's why they were shaking in the beginning. Some, some questions. And I, I don't think yeah, I, 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 I don't think I, we didn't ask any of the, we didn't ask what any the of the economic the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> effects of yeah. <laughs> but I yeah, feel like so. we can still ask them, but like in a more relax yeah. Yeah. yeah don't do that so, yeah, don't worry. i just have to scare you guys a little bit <laughs> we nearly didn't come yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah thank you guys so much for joining us and yeah keep doing what you do and please plug us in like what can we do to support like what what um social media platform should we follow how can people fund donate how can we fund donate is there a website what, what all the information you know like put it put it out there even the people in the studio you know maybe they want put to like it out there, babe. Yes, up. okay. We have an email, Therakets3 um, okay. at gmail.com. Three, like number three? Yes, okay. Therakets3. We have an Instagram page, okay. which is Therakets Ghana. Therakets underscore Ghana. Okay. okay. Yes, it's actually new. We are now really trying to go out there. We've not been very, very public, even though we've been around for like 10 years. Okay. That's because even though what we are doing is important, we don't always have space enough for everyone who comes and it's yeah. very disheartening to turn people away yeah. right. so we've kind of been under wraps for a while mm. we just come by word of mouth and mm-hmm. stuff but right now we want to really go out there we want to expand mm-hmm. so we are trying to do more trainings okay. and have more people yeah so that us. anyone who comes would have room for them okay yeah. so aside yes. the kids who will be coming if somebody wants mm. to work with you Yes. What is the process? Like, do okay. they send their CV to Terra Kids through your yes. email? Um, yes. If, if you have a degree in psychology or any social science, mm-hmm. if you are passionate to work with kids, we need a passion, passion. please, if you are passionate, because our kids, True, they will try your patience and you will know <laughs> that this job is not for you. <laughs> so you really need something strong enough. Yeah. Bigger yeah. than the salary. <laughs> That's good. Wow. Something good stronger that. than the salary. Otherwise, if you look at the salary, you run away. Yeah. <laughs> but if you have the heart for the kids, nothing will push you. But the you. salary is, is okay. It's oh, the salary is okay. Yes. Don't scare them. And you you won't work three months and then they've not been paid. I know some places. Yeah, they work three months, six yeah. months, and then yeah. salary is not coming. Yeah. You won't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's, so they can that's send promising. their CV. Yeah, you just send your CV to at gmail.com. Awesome. Yes. Okay. And then when we are doing our next batch of training, so we'll just call you in. Awesome lovely okay. so yeah and do you guys have sorry 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 sorry. do you guys have like you end the episode okay though. do you guys have like volunteers like me i don't have any background in therapy but if you are doing an event for example and you need like volunteers someone to help with chairs or something take pictures i could do that so is there any place for volunteers as well so um uh, as i mentioned we are literally opening up yes so now we'll be doing events mm. so okay. i think when we have things like that we would reach out okay and okay. then we would have stuff like that okay so yes. if you also want to be a volunteer just send it to the email as well that i my this is my name and my number i want to be a volunteer so if there's something going on send me a message and i'll be there and you can be part of their volunteers as well and um last question from you my end. side <laughs> <laughs> last question from my side if someone's watching or listening and they're like ah oh, there's someone in my family or someone i know a kid i know who I feel like might have autism. What should they do? Where do they go to like do the test? And do they come to you? Do they go to the hospital? If so, which hospital? Well, like it, like I said, it's family specific, okay. right? If you are being referred, you might start at Therakids, okay. and Therakids would refer you to Missions Pediatrics. Okay. Or if a family has gone to Missions Pediatrics first, they would be referred to us. Then. Okay. And where is uh, Missions Pediatrics? Car price. Car price. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can just find it on Google. Yes. Um, yes, around yeah, the back of Kukumimili there. Yeah. So that's it. Okay, see. And yeah, so just just Google missions pedi- p- pediatrics. Yeah, they are open every day actually, from eight to eight. Yeah. So okay. missions All pediatrics. Right. Yeah. So yeah, for the last time, 
thank you guys so, so much, much for joining, joining us. us thank you to everyone for listening yes and yeah yes and i just want to leave everybody with this i saw something on tiktok there was a boy with his sister they were doing a tiktok together and he was like she was like guys this is my brother he suffers from autism he was like i'm not suffering i just have it Aww. so that's it guys like it's love not it, something it, that they are it. suffering with they just have it and we should love everybody with autism because they are normal just like us but just not the normal you understand mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah happy autism awareness month month yeah, and forever yeah. always yes. be conscious about it yeah okay Real. Bye. Bye. Thank you.